What's up, everybody? Nick O'Dwyer, back for the 10th inning with another episode of This Day in Sports History. In yesterday's episode, we saw the great Jackie Robinson steal home for the first time in his career of 19 overall times when pitcher Fritz Ostermuller went into his windup and Robinson was able to read the windup, get home just in time, giving the Dodgers the victory on the day. We don't have any records of anybody stealing home today, but there is a lot to get into today, including three no-hitters to talk about. So if you all enjoy this video, leave a like on it. If you're new to the channel, like what you see, hit that subscribe button. Let's get into it. This Day in Sports History. We start out today with some U.S. National Championships. First, in 1892, defending champion Mabel Cahill defeated Elizabeth Moore 5-7, 6-3, 6-4, 4-6, 6-2 in five sets for her second and final major of her career. Now in 1904, Mary Sutton defeated defending champion Elizabeth Moore 6-1, 6-2 in straight sets for the first of three major titles in her career. Now we move away from tennis, go to golf for a little bit. First at the 1909 U.S. Open, George Sargent, with a score of 2 over, set a new Open scoring record to win his only major title, four strokes ahead of runner-up Tom McNamara. Three years later at the 1912 British Open, Ted Ray wins four shots ahead of runner-up and defending champion Harry Varden to win his only British Open and the first of two majors in his career. Nine years later at the 1921 British Open, Jack Hutchinson wins his only Open Championship by nine strokes after a 36-hole playoff with Roger Weathered. This would be Hutchinson's second and final major of his career. Five years later at the 1926 British Open, Bobby Jones wins the first of three British Opens, two strokes ahead of runner-up Al Watrous. For Jones, if you want to include the amateur championships he has, this would be the third major of 13 overall. And if you don't want to include those, this would be the second of seven majors in his career. Now we go to the 1932 U.S. Open, which saw Gene Sarazen with a score of six over shoot a tournament record final round 66 to beat runners up Bobby Cruikshank and Philip Perkins by three strokes to win his fifth of seven majors. Now we take a hold on golf for a little bit, move over to boxing. We start in 1935 when Joe Lewis would move to 20-0 after a six-round knockout of former champion Primo Carnera. Thirteen years later in 1948, we stay with Joe Lewis and Joe Lewis knocked out Jersey Joe Walcott in 11 rounds in his 25th defensivist title to retain the heavyweight boxing title. After this fight, Lewis would retire. It wouldn't be a permanent retirement. He would come back two years later and lose his first fight, but for two years, he was officially retired. Now we go back to golf in 1952 with the PGA Championship. Jim Ternesa wins one up over Chick Herbert. This would be his only major in his career. Now we go to rugby for a little bit. First in 1957 at the second Rugby League World Cup, Australia wins their first title after going 3-0 in the World Cup and all other three teams went 1-2. In the Rugby League World Cup, there was Australia, France, Great Britain, and New Zealand. Australia just flat out dominated this whole time en route to their first Rugby League World Cup. 20 years later in 1977, at the 8th Rugby League World Cup, Australia wins once again. This time actually having a final game though, going up against Great Britain, in which they would defeat Great Britain 13-12. This would be the 5th Rugby League World Cup title for Australia of 11 overall. Now we move to the 1978 FIFA World Cup final, which saw Argentina going up against the Netherlands. This is a very evenly matched game up until extra time where Argentina just came in and said, yeah, we're taking this. They would end up winning 3-1 after extra time. For Argentina, Mario Kempis started off the scoring in the 35th minute and it would remain that way until the last 10 minutes of regular time. In the 82nd minute, Dirk Naninga tied it up for the Netherlands 1-1 and that would go until extra time. In extra time, Mario Kempis started the scoring off once again for Argentina, scoring in the 105th minute, giving them the 2-1 lead, but they weren't done yet. 
Daniel Bertoni scored 10 minutes later in the 115th minute for a 3-1 lead. This would hold for the rest of the game, and this would be Argentina's first World Cup trophy of two overall. Now we move up to 1983, and we have the Cricket World Cup, where India upset the West Indies, winning by 43 runs to win their first overall title. Also in 1983, we have a world record in the shot put when Udo Bayer of East Germany set the record at 22.22 meters. This record came to be after Bayer actually broke his own record, which he held for five years. This one wouldn't be held as long. He would only hold it for two years, but that's a combined seven years holding a world record. Now we move up five years later to 1988. First in Major League Baseball, Cal Ripken Jr. plays in his 1,000th consecutive game. And as we know, Cal Ripken Jr. would go on to break Lou Gehrig's record. You have to get there somewhere. This was really, I'll say, the first big milestone. If you want to say 500, great. But really the first big milestone to get to 2130. Also in 1988, at the UEFA European Championship Final, the Netherlands would defeat the Soviet Union 2-0. And for the Netherlands... Rude Gouliet scored in the 32nd minute to start it off. Then in the second half, Marco Van Besten scored in the 54th minute, giving the Netherlands a 2-0 lead, something they would not look back on, getting the UEFA European Championship trophy. Three years later, we go to tennis, and Martina Navratilova wins a record 100th single match at Wimbledon after she defeated Elna Reinek 4-6, 6-2, 6-4 in three sets in the first round. Seven years later in 1998 in Major League Baseball, Sammy Sosa broke the Major League record for home runs in a single month after he hit his 19th home run in June off of pitcher Brian Moeller. This home run came in the seventh inning of a 6-4 loss to the Detroit Tigers. This home run by Sosa surpassed the mark set by Rudy York, the Tigers catcher, who finished with 18 home runs after hitting two in the last day of August in 1937. Sosa would go on to hit one more in the month of June in 1998, just increasing his record to 20 home runs in a month. One year later in 1999, Jose Jimenez, who came into the game with a 6-plus ERA, would face only 28 batters as he no-hit the Arizona Diamondbacks in the one to nothing victory for the Cardinals. Jimenez would become the first rookie to throw a no-hitter since 1973, and the first Cardinal to throw a no-hitter since 1983. In the game, Jimenez just outpitched opposing pitcher Randy Johnson by a little bit. Nine innings pitched, two walks allowed, eight strikeouts, in the one to nothing victory for the Cardinals. Also in 1999, at the NBA Finals, the San Antonio Spurs would win their first championship defeating the New York Knicks four games to one. In the series, Tim Duncan averaged 27.4 points and 14 rebounds, while David Robinson added 16.6 points and 11.8 rebounds. For the Knicks, Latrell Sprewell led the way on the scoring side 26 points. Allen Houston also added 21.6. But the defense with the two-headed monster of Robinson and Duncan, too much to handle. In the Game 5 victory for the Spurs, 78-77, Tim Duncan had 31 points. He would win finals MVP and he would get his first championship of five overall. One year later in 2000 at the LPGA Championship, Julie Incher with a score of three under wins back-to-back -back LPGA Championships, defeating Stefania Crosse on a second hole of a sudden death playoff. This would be the sixth of seven overall majors for Incher in her career. We've already talked about one of them. Now we move up to the other two no-hitters. First in 2010, after throwing 149 pitches to get to the no-hitter, Edwin Jackson would end up no-hitting his former team in the Rays. I mean, what team hasn't he played for? In the Diamondbacks' one to nothing victory over the Rays, Jackson would end up throwing 9 innings, allowing 8 walks, and striking out 6 batters in the game. With Jackson accomplishing this feat, he would join only Randy Johnson to throw a no-hitter in Diamondbacks history. Four years later in 2014, the Giants right-handed pitcher Tim Lincecum would no-hit the San Diego Padres for the second time in less than a year. The Giants would end up defeating the Padres 4 to nothing on the day, and Lincecum, nine innings pitched, one walk allowed, six strikeouts. The walk would come in the second inning, but he would still have the stuff get his no-hitter. 
Also in 2014, Luis Suarez is charged with biting at the 2014 World Cup. After the game and the following day, Suarez would be penalized. He would be banned from the World Cup as well as some other punishments brought down for his incident because it wasn't the first time he was accused of biting. It was the third time. So Suarez got penalized and rightly so. Finally, in 2018, the Oakland Athletics pitcher Edwin Jackson would take the mound against, hmm, his former team, the Detroit Tigers, in a 5-4 victory. For Jackson and the victory, this would make the Oakland Athletics his 13th MLB club in which he would record a victory, tying Octavio Dotel's record for the most with different ball clubs. So there you have it. That's what happened on this day in sports history. If I left anything out, I do apologize. If I mispronounce any names, I also apologize. I hope everybody out there is having a great day, and I will see you tomorrow for Nico Dwyer and the 10th inning.